Uh, I speak today in support of this bill, the TRIA Reform Act of 2014, and I wanted to say that I appreciate the thoughtful leadership of the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Nugebauer, in putting this product together. And I think uh, we all appreciate he and his staff's willingness to adopt the ideas of other committee members in the bill. And, Mr. Chairman, when we reflect on the necessity of this uh, approach, I think one needs look no farther than the sad state of affairs in Iraq to see that terrorism is alive, terrorism is robust in the world today, terrorism that is a threat to the United States. When the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi, was released, I think all of us were a little shocked to read about what he said to those U.S. officials when he escaped their custody. He turned to them and he said, I'll see you guys in New York. No doubt an ominous promise, and one that reminds us that we must be ever vigilant in the fight against terrorism and prepared at home in case the attack occurs. The Terrorism Risk Insurance Act before us back in 2002 and before us today gave us a financial tool in the form of insurance to fight against the potential for economic harm caused by acts of terror. And it was the infliction of economic harm that largely drove that 9-11 attack. From the very beginning, many of us realized that the role of the Federal Government in providing a backstop needed to be limited in order to allow private sector insurance and reassurance, to allow that reinsurance, room to grow. Taxpayers writing a blank check for private businesses was not and is not an option. While I do not believe past successive renewals of TRIA have gotten the balance sheet right in the private-public sector partnership that is this program, I do believe the bill before us today gets us closer to the point of that right balance. This legislation, H.R. 4871, recognizes that the insurance industry's ability and appetite to underwrite conventional terrorism risk has consistently increased since the inception of TRIA. The bill also, for the first time, makes a distinction between attacks involving, involving nuclear, biological, chemical, radiological agents and conventional attacks. We have heard directly from the industry that the reinsurance capacity that is available for terrorism in the U.S. generally is limited to conventional terrorism losses. There is virtually no capacity available for unconventional NBCR terrorism. That is recognized in this bill. Finally, Mr. Chairman, the bill before us today includes an important study on the potential for collecting upfront premiums from insurers for terrorism reinsurance coverage or requiring insurers to create capital reserve funds. I think this committee must explore the positives and negatives of pre-funding a portion of the TRIA backstop in the future. And I think that this study is the right way to go about this. It's a good start in this direction. And I encourage my, my colleagues to support the underlying 4871, and I yield back.